Tips from the ER, Good Samaritan. Ladies and gentlemen, stop calling 911 on the drunk, passed out, homeless person. There is nothing we are going to do for them in the ER but wait for them to sober up, which they could do perfectly fine exactly where you found them. If they take up a spot in the ER, we're gonna have to listen to your whiny ass complain all night about why it's taking so long to see a doctor. Here's a secret I've been dying to tell you motherfuckers. Being passed out drunk in a 7-Eleven's parking lot was their goal. They achieved it. Applaud them, pat them on the back, and then leave them the fuck alone. You really wanna be a good Samaritan? Check if they're breathing. Maybe sit them up. Yeah, that's right, get in there. Take some responsibility. And if they aren't bleeding out profusely, walk away, motherfuckers. Walk away. Tips from the ER. COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. No, the COVID vaccine did not give me the virus. It gave me an mRNA, which are the instructions to make a piece of the virus. You don't get the whole blueprint, motherfucker. That would be stupid. You get instructions to make a piece. And that piece is not enough to infect you, but it's enough for your body to go, fuck this noise, I don't like this shit at all. Destroy that motherfucker. And if we ever see anything like that again, it will be dead on arrival. The vaccine puts your body on high alert. It's like getting the game plan to your enemy's attack. Are you trying to lose this game? If not, then you want that vaccine, motherfucker. Tips from the ER, no eating. Are you upset with us because we said you can't eat anything? I'm so silly, I should have explained why. When you come into the ERs, we look for emergencies that need to be resolved. And sometimes they can only be resolved with surgery. And since we're not in some sadistic horror movie, we're gonna make sure you don't feel any cutting by knocking you unconscious with anesthesia. Anesthesia temporarily paralyzes your muscles so you have no reflexes. Crazy, right? Now imagine if you've just had some of your grandma's famous gumbo soup, but you need emergency surgery. That soup is gonna go to waste because it's gonna creep out of your stomach, up your throat, down your windpipe, and into your lungs. We all know that feeling when food goes down the wrong pipe, right? We have to cough like crazy to get it out of there. But except this time, you can't cough. Muscles are paralyzed. No reflexes, remember? What happens when you can't get food out of your lungs? You're gonna choke, and then you're gonna die. Now why would you want this to happen to you? We certainly don't. No eating in the ERs, motherfuckers. Tips from the ER, New Year's Eve. I can't believe I have to say this. A negative COVID test is not a pass to go party for New Year's Eve. What is wrong with you fucking people? Did you know you can get infected on the way to your stupid party? Stop gathering and spreading the virus. Hospitals have been having to work short staff because workers keep getting sick or they're calling in sick because they're so fed up and stressed out with all this bullshit. My hands are dry, cracked, and bleeding from all the alcohol and hand sanitizer I've been rubbing them with. I'm stress-eating donuts in the middle of the night because they're the only source of joy I could find on these 12-hour shifts. There are marks on my face from N95 masks that I'm afraid could be permanent. And you motherfuckers want to cry because you can't clink glasses for New Year's Eve? Boo. How about instead you end the year by learning to give a shit about someone other than yourself? Stay the fuck at home. Tips from the ER. Firefighters. Being a firefighter isn't what it used to be. Don't get me wrong, they're still trained to run into a burning building to save your ass if you get too carried away with kinky candle nights. Ooh. But fire prevention has gotten so advanced these days. Buildings are being constructed smarter and safer, and fire education amongst the public has gotten so good, Smokey the Bear could finally retire. Think about it, when's the last time you had to use a fire extinguisher? But if fires aren't happening as frequently, why do you always hear fire trucks screeching down the streets blaring their lights and sirens? I'll tell you why, motherfuckers. They're responding to medical calls. That's right, firefighters are also trained EMTs. Some of them even went above and beyond and became paramedics. Made mama proud. So the next time you hear a fire truck screaming down the block, there's a low chance they're responding to a blaze and a high chance they're bringing grandpa into the ER because he cracked his head open getting up for a midnight tinkle. Tips from the ER. Mtala. I have no idea what it stands for. All you need to know is that these six little letters are the reason you can't be turned away if you come into the ER, regardless of your citizenship, ability to pay, or more importantly, your personal hygiene. That's right, motherfuckers. No matter who you are, insurance or not, if you can manage to get your ass into the ER, you're going to get some treatment. And we're not going to tell you how much that treatment costs until after we say bye bye If this seems unfair, think about this. You check in for a headache and we tell you a scan of your head costs $5,000. You're thinking that money could be better spent on a new Gucci belt, so you say fuck it, no thanks. You take two steps out of the ER and you drop dead because turns out that headache was a brain bleed. <gasps>
if you never knew the cost of treatment, would you still have walked out? Luckily, you'll never have to be put in this situation thanks to Mtala. Tips from the ER, x-rays. Isn't it funny how we tell you x-rays are safe? Then just as we're about to shoot, everyone covers their genitals and runs away, leaving you exposed to radiation all by your lonesome? How does it feel to be lied to? I'm fucking with you. It's really not that much. Radiation from a chest x-ray is equivalent to the amount of radiation you get flying from California to New York three times. You breathe in more radiation just walking around outside. But unlike you, we are exposed to radiation from scans all day long. Of course we're gonna run. And why does it take so long for your scans to be read? I'll tell you why, motherfuckers. Because the person taking your picture isn't the one reading the scan. That is a radiology technician. We have to wait for a radiology doctor to read it. That's right, some poor soul went to school for 13 years just to sit in a dark room and read those grainy black and white blobs of body parts. Then they have to write a report. Then relay that message back to the ER doctor who finally gets to tell you that your arm is indeed broken. Tips from the ER. We don't know what's wrong. That's right, after all the poking, prodding, touching, and undressing, your scans, your blood work, and your labs came back, and we can finally tell you that we have not one motherfucking clue why you are in pain. You'd think you'd be happy to hear that nothing's wrong with you, but you motherfuckers hate that answer. You'd rather be told you were dying. At least that would justify why you stressed out, rushed to the ER, and spent six hours at the hospital. Instead, you got handed the biggest set of blue balls the ER has to offer. Sometimes all you needed was a day off, ibuprofen rest, and a better diet. If something hurts to move, stop moving it. Hurts to move your arm? Stop fucking moving your arm. Learn some physical therapy. You'd be surprised how many people have no idea how to use their own bodies. Anyways, thanks for coming to see us. That'll be $2,000. Tips from the ER. Oxygen. Ah. When you come into the ERs, we like to measure how much oxygen is in your body. We measure this by percentage, and the hope is that you are 95% and above. Anything close to an A-, and you're gonna get some oxygen, motherfucker. We're kind of like Asian parents when it comes to this stuff. If it's not an A, you best believe we're gonna do something to make it an A. Thanks to COVID-19, a lot of you have been coming in way below 90, and we can't get enough oxygen in you to save your life. We gotta call the respiratory therapist to bring down their fancy equipment that shoots oxygen up your nose with the power of a leaf blower. This is called high flow O2. We gotta get lots in ya and fast, or your brain's gonna stop working. If you can imagine, this uses a lot of oxygen, and it's happening so frequently these days that I can't believe I'm about to say this, Hospitals are running out of oxygen. That's right, motherfuckers. I didn't think it was possible either, but you refused to stay at home and isolate. You wanted your freedom. You said, give me liberty or give me death. And by all means, you're gonna get one. Tips from the ER. Vaping. Vaping is the healthiest way to deliver nicotine into your body. Sure. Did you know that way back in the day when cigarettes first came out, they were being advertised as healthy for you? Yeah, it was the easiest way to sell nicotine and make money. Doctors everywhere were going, got a headache? Smoke a cigarette. Stomach ache? You should smoke a cigarette. Cough, sore throat? You should definitely smoke some cigarettes. It wasn't until 50 years later that people finally started to believe cigarettes could kill. And that's because by then, enough dead bodies had piled up for researchers to cut open and say, hey, look at that. They all died from the same thing. Hmm. 50 years. Vaping is only 20 years old. Still a baby. Not enough dead bodies to provide any significant data but I bet you in 30 years there will be, because that dead body is gonna be yours. If you think inhaling anything but good quality air into your lungs is healthy for you, you are one dumb motherfucker.